Hi, I'm going to paint a bear, a little tiny bear. <laughs> Here's my little five by five canvas. It's a gessoed board and five by five inches. This is nice because it doesn't have to be framed. All right, so I'm doing a grizzly bear. Now I do have photos of grizzly bears, but a quick search online gives me a lot of other options. All right, lots of good ones. Now I can't use any of these because I didn't take the photo, but I can use any of them as inspiration. <laughs> Here we go. I wanted to show you my brush. It's just a bristle brush. This one's a Silver Grand Prix bristle, uh, number six flat. Um, but I want you to forget that now that I've said that because it doesn't matter and I want you to use whatever brush you want to do. So there's my mixture of brown and black, maybe a little bit more burnt sienna. Just something that's kind of sepia tone. Let's do that. And actually this, this particular pre-primed purchased board um, has a gesso on it that's really uh, thirsty. Like it, it soaks, soaks in this color quite a bit more than I would really like it to, but that's easily fixed just by using extra thinner. So this thinner is going to get sucked right up. But in this way, I, I don't really, I'm not really slowed down by a, by the wrong kind of gesso. And actually I kind of like, I like working with different gessos because it, it helps me be a little bit more creative when something doesn't quite go the way I expect it to at the very beginning. And it's actually been kind of fun to, to work on this. Um, one thing I've noticed is that, you know, that's, I mean, it's dry enough. It's certainly still wet. I mean, I can feel that it's cold and it has, has that, that paint thinner on there, but it's not, not wet enough that it's coming off. I can't really change anything much by, by rubbing it. But if I get this wet again, I can wipe it a little bit and it'll come off where that was wet. I don't know, just, just interesting kind of random things happen, you know? And this is all in preparation for, for the actual bear that's going to be on there. I think it just makes it interesting having, having something other than white on there. And if it has texture on it, that's even better. All right, and I can always change that as I go. So all these bears that I liked, mm, the cute ones have a fatter face. You can kind of see that they're, they're maybe at the end of, end of autumn, right before they go and hibernate. So the fatter I can, can make this bear, I think the, the more adorable he'll be and that's that's going to be my intention with this one. No two bears are quite alike, but but I do have to get, get it to look like a grizzly. Let's see. This is a relatively straightforward subject. It's not terribly difficult, which is which makes it a lot of fun to paint. Some of these, these pictures that I'm looking at have kind of this, this raised eyebrow look, which I like. It's kind of fluffy around the eye there. So I'm just sketching in. Same type of mixture, just a little bit darker. Yeah, it's it's mostly black, actually, but it but it does have some some brown in it. I like having a little bit of brown. And I'm I'm more or less still sketching, but sketching just a little bit darker now. 
Let's see. Just kind of looking around at the different noses. Sometimes they have like noses like this that are like inverted triangles. Sometimes they have things like that. Sometimes they're more just rounded. I don't know. Now I've got some some dark color there, so I can kind of just just go with that. I'll make his mouth upturned. Depending on the angle, you can see that upturn in the mouth on the bears. And it's fun to take advantage of that sometimes. I'm going to go ahead and make its ears dark too. On every single picture here, regardless of the angle of the, of the light, the ears are dark. They're almost always in, in shadow, just the, the nature of what they are. So I've established the, the darks, you know, just sort of the pattern of lights and darks. They all seem to have this type of thing on their foreheads. Their fur sort of goes like this. Their pattern, the furrier they are, the more, more of this they have. The fuzzier they are. I'd say that's pretty, pretty cute. I like him. But I don't like, well, maybe I do. Let me, let me look. I was going to say I don't like that he's a little bit off-center, but actually, you know what? I do like that he's off-center, but even more than that, I'm going to kind of tilt his head just a little bit. I'll bring this down, bring this up. So then I have to bring, to change everything just a little bit. I'm going to make him facing... Um, and so the more I change, of course, the more I'm, I'm getting away from any of my, uh, reference pictures here, but I was already to the point where I wasn't, wasn't really looking, I mean, I literally am not like honing in on any one picture at all. I'm just looking generally at all of them. So I'm not painting these things. Just like when I paint landscapes, I'm not painting necessarily the landscape. I'm just painting, I'm just using it as reference. So I'm referring to it. So right now I'm mixing what I already did there is, and you're probably seeing that it's pretty much the same color as this background, but it's got more, <clears throat> it's got more yellow in it. Well, it's white and burnt sienna with a little bit of yellow. So I'm just slowly redrawing these by by drawing or by painting the the stuff around it. I really like how he's turning out, actually. His personality is the most important part. And I really think he's got a great personality. I think that tilt of the head really made it. Just building up the paint, keeping the darks where they should be, keeping these light parts where they should be in relation to everything. Now it's starting to look a little flat, but I am just trying to get, get paint in there. I think it's fun to see the, the actual physical properties of the paint. So the thicker, the better, I think. I like to see brush strokes too. Just makes it more fun to look at.
And of course, nothing I put on there is set in stone. I can change anything. So I'm just mixing a little bit more brown. Each of these times that I'm going down to my palette to mix up a, a different color, um, I'm just mixing more brown into the mix that's already on my brush. And I'm not changing changing brushes and I'm not needing to to clean it just because they're all in that same color family and I'm going darker but subtly and uh, there's no need to um, to to clean the brush I do want to go pretty dark down there though so I'll go pretty brown with some black mixed in just to get that nice shadow under there. Don't want to lose that little smile, so I'll have to remember to do that. Get that back in there. So in a way, I mean these are a little bit like cartoons of bears in the in the true sense of the word cartoon which is kind of like a caricature. So I, I am trying to be still realistic though. So I want it to look like a real bear, not just a, not just a made up version of a bear. I want to stay true to, to real physics of light and dark. <laughs> this is so much fun. <laughs> the darks in there, more color in those darks. Oh, let's get some nice thick stuff in there. And see that I'm twisting my brush around because I've still got some of that light color on there. That's nice and thick. So as long as I've got it on my brush, I might as well use it if I if I need it. So it's got that double chin going on. I love it. <laughs> and now that I've got all this in there, now I can go in with some real dark and real thick black whole bunch of black. You can see, whoops, there you go. You can see how much is on there. And for a little painting, that's quite a bit of paint. Yeah, just put that right there. And make it clear that I was intentional about, about putting that there. And while I've got that on my brush, I'll go ahead and some of the dark parts of the eyes. <laughs> Hello, bear. Now I like this this soft edge there, but I do need some some dark to be in there too. It kind of fades down from the nose down into those lips. of that same color, just a tiny bit more brown put in there. Uh, I'm going to put some more brown down here, dark brown. Just want that, that muzzle, lower part of his lips to stand out just a little bit more. Impressionistically indicate some fur. kind of stylistically. Okay, I'll wipe that off my brush a bit just because I don't need that much paint anymore. I'll go back into my pile of other browns that I have, my lighter browns. I just need a little bit of that up here to show those, that those were in the, 
the light because those ears still pick up a little bit of light. That is one of the cutest, fattest grizzly bears I've ever seen. <laughs> and I didn't see him until just now. It's kind of fun. So much fun to make something up. Now I've got a, uh, a decision to make. Hmm. Well, two decisions. Um, besides little things like fixing the edges and stuff. Oh, that's all better already. But, okay, my two decisions are where do I put the light on the nose? Because I, I want light on there. That just brings so much life to it. Not only on the nose, but in the eyes and how much of that to do. I think I'm going to mix up a little bit of a gray, like a light gray. So white with a tiny bit of black. And that mixture... And I did wipe off my brush. I didn't clean it thoroughly, but I wiped it off. So I've got mostly white with just a little bit of black. And it's thick enough that as I drag it through here, it's going to um, not mix in a whole lot with the black that's already there. And that, remember how thick that black is there. Let's see. I think I'll put it more on this side. And I'll lift my brush slowly across. Wow. So that makes a huge difference. And then since light is shining on on that side of him, he's going to have the top, top of his nose is just going to be a little bit lighter, kind of gray. And I think I'm not going to do the ones down here, but I do need to do some nice light, but very small. I'm still going to use my same brush, but I'm just going to, I know it's not very pointy, but there's, you know, there are parts on there that are, that have a point to them. And if I go like that, you see, I got a little tiny dot of white on my finger. So I'm just going to do that type of thing on my canvas. Here, I do it again, just like that. So let me let me load it up again, just so I have that amount of paint on my brush. Let's see. Do I want to put the the little bright spot in his actual eye, which technically is brown or orangish brown, or down in the corner? Maybe both. Let's try it. I'll just do that. Okay. And by, by putting it on there with a the big brush, of course, it's not quite the, the right size or shape. I don't really want this vertical line there. I want it to be nice and round. So I'm going to go back in with maybe not black, but um, since bears have, have kind of honey-colored eyes, I'll make a dark version of that honey. So I'll brown with some yellow mixed in, and I'll go ahead and just kind of fine tune that, that white part. So that white part got covered up with the brown, but I still want it to have his pupils, so it doesn't look like he's blankly staring. So I'll put a little bit of that black back in. There we go. Now that looks like a bear who's bright and chipper and very much alive. And I, I have to say, just completely adorable. <laughs> I'm really just having a blast with this guy. <laughs> now, the last thing I have to do to finish this up is decide what color the background needs to be. I, I like it as is. I think the brown, well, I know that brown matches brown. It looks good, good together. It looks good as it is. And this color will probably go well just about anywhere. In in the buyer's house. And by the way, the person who commissioned this, asked me to do it, is also a, a watcher of the channel. So you know who you are. Thank you for letting me film this and for asking me to do it. It's a pleasure to do it. I'm gonna mix up with my little palette knife here. I think, I'll, I think a light blue will be fun. 
aquamarine type of color, like turquoise almost, but a light, a very light version of that, very light turquoise. Okay, and so with my palette knife, I'm just gonna drag it, and there's still more, a little bit more paint on that side, so then I can use that to go in around the edges. And I want to not make it super obvious that that it's done with a certain shape of, of pala knife. I want to hide that fact, which is partly why I'm, I'm dragging it in this way. And the only, pla only place that I'm really doing a, an edge is where there's actually an edge to the bear. But I'm not in any way trying to cover this area. I'm just trying to get some of that paint on there in random spots. Okay, that's a little bit too sharp around the, the ears. I want it to look fuzzy. So I'm going to go back in just a little bit. It's a tiny bit stylized. But I want it to feel like fur. And actually, I'm going to soften that. Just so it feels a little bit more like fur. To feel fuzzy. You may think this is a terrible thing to use my fingers, but... I avoid poisonous um, paint colors just so I don't have to worry about it. And it's not like I, I set out trying to, to do this. It's not a gimmick or anything. I just find that it's the easiest way to get, get a really, really soft edge. Yeah, I like that. I like where that's going. The background kind of covers it covers up the edge of the ear in places and then the ear covers up the background in other places and that gives the impression that it's that it's very fuzzy because you can't really see an edge to it okay now is the time that I just stand back for a moment and assess what I've done and see if that really gets the message across the one that I want so does everything look right to me in other words that's the easy way to say it the only thing that bothers me a tiny bit is that these eyes just ever so slightly look like they're looking in different directions. You know, it's very subtle. It's probably no one would notice it but me, but I notice it, so I'm going to get some of my dark on there again. And just, I think it'll look better if it's not quite so sharp, too. So. Very subtle little changes here. I mean, obviously the eyes need to stand out. That's where the kind of the soul of an animal is or a person. But I don't want them to stand out too much. I don't want the edges to be super sharp. I think I like that better. Yeah, that just feels right. There's still a little bit of, I'm not sure if you're, yeah, you're seeing it a little bit on camera. The honey color of the eyes. And now it looks like he's looking up in that direction just a little bit. And he's got his cute head tilted. I just love him. <laughs> and this was made up. And I don't say that out of pride. It's, I hope you don't think that. It's, um, it's to get, to empower you to know that you can do it too. You can look at stuff and make stuff up. We, we make stuff up. <laughs> We've been doing it since we were kids, and we look at a tree and make it up. That's what kids do. They look at the sunshine, the sun in the sky, and they make it up. And it may not be entirely accurate, but it's a little bit sad that we lose that creativity. And it's so much fun to be totally creative. So anyway, you can see what I was looking at there. You know, the same. Whoops. <laughs> no, you can't. There we go see what I was looking at, which was the same thing that I showed you before. Just random pictures. And there's my finished bear. And here's my palette. You can see all the, the little colors that I used. The background, the gray of the nose, the white of the nose. 
well, the almost white. Of course, the honey color of the of the um, of his nose area. I forgot the name at the moment. And it gets lighter and lighter, or uh, sorry, darker and darker. Some of the browns. It just there was a little bit of a, a pattern to the way I used everything there, but I only used that color, that color, and that color, and then the background, which is that blue and that green and white. Well, there's one thing left to do, and that is, of course, to sign it. So I've got my little teeny tiny brush here. You can see what I used there. I think I might have found this at Walmart or um, Hobby Lobby. I, I don't remember. <laughs> I'm gonna dip it in my, my little thing here. And this just has um, Gamsol odorless thinner. And since I, well, let's see. I'm gonna look at the color that I'm going to be signing it on. So I'm probably gonna do it right there. Uh, yeah, it's right down there. So I probably will do black. I'll just do pure black. And the, the thickness that I'm going for here is almost like cream. A little bit more of that. By the way, the, the signature is usually the only part that I ever use medium or a uh, paint thinner in once I get past the the initial um, like drawing stage all right so sorry I didn't hold that very still but there's my tiny little signature wow it's, it's tough to tough to sign something that small but now it looks like it doesn't stand out too much, but you can still see it. Show it from some different angles. I'm going to let this sit for a day or two before I decide what to do with the sides. I may paint them black, I may paint them brown. I may even leave them as is. I'm not sure yet. I'll have to decide what works best artistically. Different angles for you to see. Close-ups of that. All right. Well, thanks so much for joining me. I hope this was fun to watch. I hope, as always, that it was empowering to you. So go out and make your own art. Let me know if you have any questions. Um, go to my website if you want to. <laughs> It's trentgoodmanson.com, and I will talk to you again very soon. Bye.